Hello class and welcome to this Adventures of Lolo walkthrough right here on Video Games 101 by way of Let's Play with Briggins. I'm your instructor, Professor Briggins, and Adventures of Lolo is, and I feel like I've been using this phrase a lot recently on this channel, but it's a very novel puzzle title for the NES. I love this game. I love that there is nothing much like it on the system. You got maybe like your Kickle Cubicle to some extent. More of a, an obscure fringe title right there, but still a good one. But uh, combining a little bit of action with puzzle solving, this is a great game. Uh, in terms of difficulty, I'm going to cop out a little bit. Just give this game a 5 out of 10. On the frustration scale, this equates to throwing your controller across the room, probably on some of the later levels with some of the trickier, less obvious puzzles. A lot of the puzzles can be figured out within a, a minute or two. Some of these will probably really rack your brain if you don't have this walkthrough. But that's why we're here. We got you covered with solutions to every single puzzle. So let's run the intro and get into this Adventures of Lolo walkthrough right here on Video Games 101. Alright, as we start a new game, Lolo bravely approaches the castle. I like this, this shot. It's the perfect size for that door, by the way. Our mission, save the captured princess. Oh, we're knocking this out early this week, I like that. As we show the trope list right there, add it to the list, and the controls for Adventures of Lolo. Very simple. There is a suicide button, in case you ever get stuck, it's very possible to get stuck in this game. As we show you the Briggs notes now for Adventures of Lolo, or better said, the Briggs note, just know what you're doing. Know the solution. We got you covered. In these first couple stages, very simple. Just follow along. And uh, what's also very straightforward, the items of this game. Let's go to Blaze. All right, let's talk about the items you will find in the Adventures of Lolo. First, we have the heart tokens. You got to collect all of these to open the chest to get to the next level. But in certain levels, this will earn you some additional abilities or items, such as shots for your egg launcher. You can use this to trap enemies and eggs, move them around as you might need to complete the level. We have, sometimes this will unlock the arrow token ability so that you can use this to reset and change the direction of an arrow on the ground. We have the bridge, which you can use as a bridge to cross water in certain spots. And last but not least, the mallet. Doesn't come up a lot, but we can use this to clear out a boulder here and there to complete certain levels. But there you go. Just the basic items you will find through the hard tokens in the adventures of Lolo. Good luck. Thank you, Blaze. Yes, sometimes you need to grab a finite number of these heart tokens to get the, uh, the egg shots. Sometimes you have to pick up a specific one. I suppose if there was a second Briggs note, it would be as we can double fire here to get rid of that skull and gain access to these. So we're going to trap these skulls. And we're going to push this one. We can actually hold off on that. As we grab the pearl, that always ends the stage and clears all the enemies. And we push this one out of the way, go to the next stage. So these enemies start moving at the start. They can't kill you, but they can trap you against a wall. So you want to make sure you're not in a confined space when they're near as they will trap you in as if uh, someone just pushed a block at you. That's basically what they do. But yeah, this first floor was just to get you acquainted with the game, the basic enemies, mechanics, all that stuff. As we move on to the second floor, there are 10 floors in this game to battle through before we get to the proper end of the battle. So this enemy does come after us from the start. If he touches us, we will lose a life. Get a feel for his move set here. Sometimes he makes a beeline for you. Depends if he's in his role at the time. Then he won't change directions, but again, just grab the pearl to, to get him to disappear. So these kind of uh, Easter Island looking statue heads here, if you walk in line with them, in sight of them, and there's no blocks in between you and uh, and them. Trees do not count. 
they will shoot you. So if there were just a tree between us, they would take that shot. If we move to the left there, that one on the left would shoot us. You can't even outrun it. It freezes you as soon as you get in its sight. So this particular enemy takes a shot at you as soon as you line up with it. So it's similar to the other enemy, the difference being that this one moves back and forth. So something to keep in mind. Note that we can move, so we can't go in line with them, so we need to go all the way around here. And it's the same deal, a tree will not give us cover. We can't walk through trees, but their bullets can go through trees, so. Now we're gonna go all the way back around to get to our pearl here and get him to clear out. Note that we can move the blocks kind of to a half move, so there's, there's the full moves. And then there's the half move. Sometimes we want to use that half move because it gives us extra cover. I'll point it out uh, more clearly when there's a good example of how we can use that to our advantage. In some puzzles, you need to use it uh, to move it one of those half moves, but so now that that hammer lit up, you can see we could use it to access that heart. We have two shots. We can get this little slug looking guy out of the way and move on to the next screen. This is one of the more annoying ones. A lot of my least favorite puzzles in this game are the ones that just take a long time. You know, the, the solution is clear enough, so we're just gonna move this one without shooting it. And then when he comes out of his egg, we're gonna freeze this one just so we can grab this heart here. You'll see he's confined to the grass area where he can't go beyond the grass. We can change the direction of the uh, arrow right there with that power-up that Blaze mentioned. Here you can see we can we can trap the, the slugs in the eggs and then move them around and then when they come out they'll be stuck there and they're essentially an extra block for us to use. And did I, did I make a mistake here? Now we can still salvage this. Be very careful about where you uh, where you place these blocks. Don't want to force them up against the wall to where you can't access them. So we're trapping in these skulls here. We've trapped in the top one and now we have a clear lane. Just a lot of block reorienting in this one to clear the second floor here. Not the end of the battle. Kind of reminds me of the uh, legendary wings at the end. Hold out for final victory. We're not quite done yet. So again, we got to block this off. We can't get that bottom right heart until we, uh, we block it off and protect ourselves. And while we're doing that, let's get our first fluff fact about this game with fluff. Adventures of Lolo is the fifth game in a Japanese puzzle series named Eggerland, which began with 1985's Eggerland Mystery. Adventures of Lolo is the first game in the series to be released in North America, and wasn't even released in Japan because it's comprised entirely of reused puzzles from the first four games of the series. So developer Hal decided there was no point in re-releasing a game full of stages that Japanese players had already beaten. Apparently Hal has never heard of best of albums or clip shows. Leaving money on the table, thank you very much Fluff. And here we gotta box out all the Medusas again. Looked up the proper name, that's what those are. And Alright, so this one we get some shots from this. This is a an Alma coming at us. Just give him a shot. Just push him into the water for now. This will keep them out of our hair for a little bit as they float around until they eventually sink and they'll respawn in a moment. But this gives us enough time to box out that skull too, even though it's not that big of a deal. And we'll push this snakey in here. I call them slugs. They're called snakeys. All the proper names. We can just ride the egg over here and safely pick up the pearl to clear the screen. We can just keep riding the, uh, the eggs in the water until we get off. They won't sink until we do that. This enemy is called a Leaper. These enemies fall asleep as soon as they touch you, so you gotta be very careful to not be boxed in or have them box you out of an area that you need to get to. So that's the best place to do it right there. Stand right where we showed. And now we have access to all of the hearts. But again, this is just the level where they get you acquainted with that particular enemy or better acquainted. Can't take those shots with you to the next stage, unfortunately, so we might as well just drop them there. This one takes a little bit of time. This is where we need to push these blocks right here to make sure that we 
don't have to worry about... I can't push that one in there while that part is there. I want to box out as many of these skulls as is possible before we grab the last heart and they come alive. So let's see. We can trap this one here. And now we push this over. Now all the skulls are accounted for. We can push this one down here to give ourselves an entryway to the pearl. Pretty simple. Just takes a second to take in the stage. These little creatures are called galls, I believe. They don't come alive until we get the final heart piece, but then they will fire shots at us. The difference with the galls is that they do not freeze you in place like the medusas will when they take the shot at you, or the dawn medusas, who we've also seen, I think, on one occasion. We'll point those out, but there you go. Third floor down. Moving right along to the fourth floor now. So these are the Don Medusas. The exact same effect as the Medusa, except these ones are mobile, so we cannot be in line with them at any point while they're moving. So we can move around them while they're not in line with us, but we have to we have to be very aware of their whereabouts at all times. Again, they can shoot through the bush here, so we'll just box them out with the... The boulders will protect us. It's just... Basically just the trees, which are the ones which do not provide us any protection. And we're gonna go surfing here. Ride one of these snakies, give it a shot. And it's gonna go right down the middle here, and if we're quick, we can grab both of these, so we'll... Exit, move to the right, exit again. Be very careful not to go too far to the left, otherwise we'll be trapped there in the middle. You can see it's kind of a skull shape right there, sort of like in Bubble Bobble, another action puzzle game, a bit more of an action-y game in that, that game's case. Less puzzle elements there. Note the Medusa, obviously, in the bottom right here, so we need to make sure we box him out. Before we take him on, we can do that just like so right there. And we gotta box out this gall as well when he wakes up when we grab that heart. And now that skull is trapped. All the projectile throwing enemies are safely safely behind bricks or boulders. And we are good. Do not make the mistake of pushing that block up there and then trapping yourself. <laughs> or uh, blocking the exit. In that case, you will lose the level in that case. Here we're moving. We don't want the Don Medusa to have a, a line of sight on us. You can trap him on the right, just like that. Since we don't need to go over there anymore, use the bridge right there to cross. Take out that gall. It's just that easy. Alright, this one... Sometimes it takes a second. We gotta make sure not to get in the line of either the... the Don Medusa or the conventional Medusa. Not that the Don Medusa is moving. So we have a couple shots from that heart, so we can move this... at a kind of a halfway point right there, and we'll use the other one block the Medusa, as well as put that right there, and we'll use one more. This is where we need to use the, make sure you move that block right there to block the tree. Again, we'll not provide you cover right there, and then we just move this up right there. So we're covering six galls with just four of the snakies at this point. All very safe. They look very eager to blast us, but here we go. We're 40% through this game now. Puzzles just get harder from here. On to floor five. This takes some mental gymnastics right here. 
need to plan this one out, otherwise you can very easily trap yourself and have to hit the, the very dark select, aka suicide button. I'm gonna clear these out all the way, make sure we give ourselves as much room as possible. And this move is very important. Let's move this up and give ourselves shelter from the enemies here. And we can push this all the way up and use that little bridge there to push that block and get to the exit. Got another Medusa. Usually it's a good idea to grab all of the free... Or grab a, uh, a directional reset item here. Push this out of the way so we don't have to use this just yet. It's a good idea to grab all the loose heart blocks so that you can get any power-ups that you might need. Any shots in particular. And now we can reset this one here so that we can... We're gonna have to reuse some of these blocks. This one here. We have to go down and around. Can't go up and around, otherwise we'll get shot by the Medusa. So we'll block that out there. We need one up top to grab this heart here. And now he's sufficiently blocked. We can grab the pearl and move right along once again. And this is just all about firepower. We have to be a little conservative with our shots here. Get rid of that one, but we're not going to get rid of this top one yet. And up here looks more complicated than it actually is. We'd actually just grab these without having to worry about any of the uh, projectile shooters. Push him out of the way, and here we go. Again, seems very dangerous, but the pearl's right there. Skulls don't have time to get to us. Don't overthink it. And... This is one where we need to grab certain ones to get the shots that we need, and as we're doing this, let's bring back in Fluff for another Fluff fact about Adventures of Lolo. Adventures of Lolo, developer HAL Laboratory, is a Japanese video game developer founded in 1980. Their logo depicting a dog incubating eggs is named Anutamago, which literally translates to dog eggs and is meant to represent an unexpected bond. Outside of the Eggerland series, Hal would later go on to develop and be known for the Kirby, Mother Slash Earthbound, and Super Smash Brothers series. Regarding their name itself, the letters H, A, and L were purportedly chosen because each letter put them one step ahead of IBM. Very clever, I like that, it's cute. I see you, Hal. Alright, so this is all just about trying to confuse you, basically, with the, uh, the different directions, but that's it. And we are now halfway through this one. Second half gets even more challenging. Some of these took me a while, I'm not gonna lie. Um, the final level in particular, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. Sometimes the solutions are so simple, we got a lot of Medusa blocking to do here. The heart tokens, you can see, count as a block temporarily. We can't grab one, obviously, until we've cut off the, uh, the Medusa. Push those inside blocks to the right so that we have access to that block. And it's going to be the same thing here. We want to push this one to the outside so that we have this one to push down and around. Now we have an extra block right here. We can't grab this heart token yet, so let's, let's go around here, push that down, and now we can go up and over, push this down, and there we go. <laughs> sometimes these puzzles have multiple solutions, sometimes, especially in the later levels, there's only one way to do them. There's no room for error, in other words. This is another tricky one, took me a little while to figure out how we want to use these. We get a two for to block a couple Medusas here. Cannot grab that particular heart token yet. We're gonna have to move that snaky, but we need a shot first. All right, so now we have two. 
push this one all the way down, we can block out that... that Medusa. Block that out. And we were efficient with that block, so we didn't need to... use the, the extra egg. Just one of those leapers bouncing around. Terrible case of insomnia. Can't grab this heart token yet, so let's move this and block out the Medusa so we can access these two tokens here. And the idea here is just to make sure he's over on the left side before we free him, and then bring him all the way over here, and we're going to use him in such a way he's going to come all the way around, and then the only spot where he can get to us is right there, and that's where he falls asleep. He can't go on the grass, but if we're at the top point there, that's where he'll touch us and fall asleep. Thus blocking that Medusa. We're gonna push this one all the way. We can actually push this one into the grass. And then drop it all the way around the world. To block him out there. There we go. Nothing too crazy yet. I'll admit. I'm gonna do some more surfing here. This is, uh, gonna be a little quick about this one. So while this one's going around the world, we're gonna come down here. We're gonna block out the Medusa. Can't grab that heart token to our left yet. Very quickly shove him over there and get off. That's gonna sink, but we now have this. And the next one we pick up is gonna give us our bridge. And now, obviously, we can't just go straight there to grab that. We're going to have to go all the way around. Push this down here, grab that. Again, don't overthink it. That's another one where I think there's a couple of different ways to do that, but this one's all about going sailing here. Or surfing. I need to really stick to a metaphor. Jump on land right quick and be ready to disembark again. Take the time that you have to block out the Medusa and then very quickly jump over to this island and then jump right... Oof, that was close. <laughs> right back off. This one, we can actually take this all the way around. Assuming we've blocked out that Medusa, we can ride this all the way to this pearl. And this will lead us to a staircase, which is thankfully right down here. Now 60% the way through this game. On the floor 7. I'd say this, uh, this class is a lot easier to, to narrate for versus games where, you know, the gameplay can get a bit repetitive. The solutions are always changing here. Here we need to be very careful with our block movement. Don't want to waste anything or trap ourselves in a corner. We can grab that there as long as you grab the, uh, the, the pearl before the gall shots get to you, then they'll just disappear. It's different than the, the Don Medusas here who just freeze you. So with that in mind, we gotta wait until the... That was very close. It's cutting it very close. As we have this Rocky here, he's called. Moving around. He's kind of the, the wild card of this one. And being kind of annoying right here, trying to just force these Don Medusas into the corners. Gotta be careful with the Rockies, they will force you into the path of a Medusa or a Don Medusa very easily, so. Trying to block off all our choke points here, and there we go. Got a, some twofers there. This is another one where it's easy to overthink, and you're thinking, oh, we got all these skulls here, I'm gonna have to freeze them. No! All we gotta do is block the two Medusas here and grab this last token. But before you grab it, make sure you freeze those two because you will not have time to grab the pearl with those galls right there. They will shoot you. They're close enough that their shots will get to you. Another one where we need to be very careful about our, our power-up usage. Basically, want to flip that first one that I showed, and then that one right there, and then we should be able to grab the rest of these. The skull's going to come down this way, so just... There you go. Just 
don't get caught in the dead end with uh, one of those arrows pointing in the wrong direction or that skull will catch up to you. Another instance where we'll get a couple changing tile options here. And I'm going to leave this last one so that we can work this midsection here first. And then kind of block out some, uh, some skulls. And then we can just grab that there and make ourselves basically a little corridor where we can grab the pearl because they can't get on top of the pearl itself. Again, I've said it many times, don't overthink it as we are 70% through this game. Now let's celebrate our progress with another fluff fact. Fluff? Here's another fact about developer HAL Laboratory. The company has long been associated closely with Nintendo, having their development center in Nintendo's building for many years, and actually being considered to be a second party developer with Nintendo. The company began struggling financially in 1991, after the development of Famicom title Metal Slater Glory, at which point Nintendo offered to rescue them from bankruptcy on the condition that they appoint HAL employee Satoru Iwata as their president. Iwata served as HAL president from 1993 to 2000 and even came up with the aforementioned Anutamago logo in that time before moving up Nintendo's ranks and soon becoming Nintendo's president in 2002. Awada led Nintendo through their successful DS and Wii console launches, and with them record profits by 2009. Awada held the position of Nintendo president until his untimely death in 2015, but he continues to be held in extremely high regard by Nintendo through references and nods like the emulated version of NES Golf, which was featured on the Nintendo Switch, a touching Easter egg which we talked about in our class on NES Golf, right here on Video Games 101. Yes, that, uh, that, that was a really sweet thing that Nintendo did. Um, you can check that out. Link in the description has every single class we've ever done. By the way, if you haven't already done so, please subscribe to this channel to enroll in this class. We do one of these classes every week. We'd love to have you aboard. This is another tedious one where we need to move a lot of blocks down to the bottom to, uh, to block out these medusas here. Make sure we have a open lane to get to and that I just... Can I salvage this? Oh, that I messed it up. Now we can move it back. Okay. Uh, I think we push it down. There we go. Just rearranging furniture here, basically. But it is to a goal, and then we can just walk up right here. They're far, just far enough away that they won't hit us. This is another one that took me quite a while to figure out how to orient these blocks. Because they only give you so many, and there is a very limited corridor, as you can see. Use the two for right there, so we can go up and over. And now, move this ever so slightly so we can block out the one to the right and below us, but yeah. Making those blocks work for us in that one. Another very tedious one, where we have to go all around the world four times. Maybe not all the way around the world, but yeah, it's uh, it's not the most efficient way to uh, to box out. Well, it is the most. It's the only way to box out this Medusa. It's very slow and steady, and always go down and around rather than going between the heart. Sometimes you just lose sight of where you're going, and you think, oh, it's fine. I'm going to leave this bottom heart just because it's a bit closer and easier to get back to the uh, the pearl at the bottom. With regards to that skull, which is going to come alive as soon as we pick up the, the final heart token. And, yeah, we can push this through the bottom here. There we go. And I can resituate this right there. So let's grab that one come around and grab this one and go straight for the pearl right there. All right, this is another one where we need to do a lot of block rearranging. Note that the only block which is pointing down is this one right here. And be very aware of the position of the Don Medusas. Do not find yourself lined up with one across the screen. 
They're easy to lose sight of, but, uh... See, we just keep moving these blocks out from the top via that down arrow right there. And then just a little more brain power on how to most efficiently, because we need to block out these trees as well from these Don Medusas. But we also need to be able to grab the hearts up top, so it's... It's a little sneaky. It's all about efficiency here, and... I don't know if I want to come. I think that's a good spot. So we can block out both of them. And I think I'm going to need to nudge this bottom one down a little bit more. There we go. So now if we push this down and we come all the way around, should be safe. We can box out that Medusa there. And then repeat the same thing for the other side. Again, being very careful not to push one of these blocks to an area where we cannot recover it. go all the way around. And now everything should be safe. There we go. Tricky one to end this particular floor on. We did it. Alright, the penultimate floor now. We're almost at the Room of the Great Devil. I do appreciate that they switched that up. Alright, this one's really hard. At the start stand right here, as soon as he goes to the right, make your move. Grab this and go all the way to the right and down and around, and it's just basically, it's Klinger Winger from Battletoads, basically, at this point. This is where I usually lose a life, if I'm going to lose a life. But there you go. Yeah. That's the only, that's the most action you'll see in this game, for the most part. Now we can get to back to some, oh, very complicated box moving here. You check out our class on... Battletoads, by the way, and check out Klinger Winger. <laughs> the agony we went through with that class. And the playlist in the description has that and all of our classes featured in it. Just follow along with these uh, these moves here, and let's bring in Fluff for one last Fluff fact. The Eggerland series has seen a dozen releases between 1985 and 2000, though some of these are just rehashes for North American audiences. For instance, just like this title, Adventures of Lolo 2 in the U.S. is also made up of reused puzzles from earlier Japanese games in the series. Adventures of Lolo 3 is the first U.S. title in the series to be made almost entirely up of new stages, though most of the puzzles are easier than those in the Japanese games. While the gameplay typically remained the same in the series, small changes were implemented in later titles, like the ability to switch between Lolo and Lala in Adventures of Lolo 3. The final couple Erkerland titles were released in Japan only as Windows exclusives. It seems unlikely at this point that we'll ever see a resurgence or a new title in this series, Professor. Yeah, that's a shame. Thanks, Fluff. I could see this game doing really well on, say, like, a mobile-type situation. Be fun to just knock out on a commute. Fun puzzle game like this. Alright, so this one's not quite obvious as to what you need to do here. Um, as soon as we grab this, the, uh, the Gaul's gonna take a shot at us. So what we want to do is knock out that snakey as we did. And then when he comes back, he provides cover for us. Very snaky. Freeze the, the Gaul up there before you grab the, the pearl, and there you go. But yeah, that one... That one also took me a while. This is another very... I think this is the stage I was thinking of before, which is where we had another situation where we had a bunch of Medusas and not a whole lot of blocks to work with. This is that stage times two. It's much trickier. And less obvious as to where we need to orient our blocks here. We have to rely on our speed to avoid some of these galls and just prioritize the blocks for the Medusas. I think this is it. And if we just go quickly here. There we go. Alright. That's how you do that. 
On to the final floor. Going to fight with the Great Devil one-on-one. -on -one. Don't worry, we got Gary waiting in the wings, ready to bring us home when we get to that final and only boss in this game. All right, note where we want to drop this snakey right here. Let him emerge from his egg, let him hatch right in that spot. This one we just want to get out of the way, this bottom right one. Trap the Don Medusa. Now we're going to take one of these blocks and move it all the way over. Be very careful where you stop it, right there. We moved that, uh, that snakey out of the way so we can move this into position. And now we're going to need one last block to make a very tight but effective corridor of blocks in the bottom left to shield us from that shot. As soon as we grab the, the heart, obviously all these skulls are going to come to life. So you'll see now why we put the snake where we put them at the start of the level so that they would create a little bit of a seal along with this block right here. Now we have all the time in the world that we need to get to the pearls, which is good because we move very slowly in sand. And there we go. A little bit of everything in that one. All right, this one isn't too bad. I'm convinced there might be more than one solution for this one. We have to be very careful with the leapers here as they fall asleep. I want to basically bring them out and just stand on the opposite side each time. And then they'll just all basically freeze in a line right here. So just make sure they're clear, run to the opposite side. There you go. Now we have a little walkway through here. Grab the remaining parts. And we can shoot these galls, move them out of the way. We can push this one, force him into the face of his buddy. Go right behind him. Not too difficult. Especially for floor 10. This one took me a while. I was convinced that I knew the solution for the longest time. Burned a few lives to figure out, no, this is the way to do it. Timing is going to be very key. as soon as we freeze this snakey here, so pay attention to what we do here. Freeze him and move him down and around to block out the Medusa. Grab the heart. So timing very key here, so we're gonna move this guy down, block out the Medusa, shoot, and then move out of the way before that egg clears. So now, as soon as that snakey respawns right here, we're going to clear that out of the way and then use the snakey to block out the Don Medusa right there. Again, thought I had a very different solution in my mind the first few times I ran that, but that is the best and maybe only way to do that. A lot of blocking to do here. We cannot leave that snakey there. We need him, so make sure you clear him out before he uh, hatches, otherwise he won't have enough shots to finish this one. Same deal here, block, grab the heart, and clear it out. Now we're going to knock out this block, but just make sure that we're moving down, we don't get shot by that Don Medusa. Alright, we can trap them down there together, and now we just got to use him to kill two birds, or block two enemies the case may be. And now we can just use our last remaining shot to trap that skull onto the final level where the solution seems easy once you know what to do. So we're going to freeze this one right here and be very quick. We're going to freeze this one and then move it. And while that left one is frozen, we can move this. Otherwise, you won't have time to get in position to move it. And now we're just going to 
run. All the way down, right in the middle. Grab the pearl, and we have done it. Final boss, Gary. It's Scary Gary's Boss Beaters. Better late than never, the final boss, King Egger. To beat him, trap him in an egg, and expel him. By which I mean, just put down the controller, put your feet up, and enjoy it. After a long puzzle game, you have earned this victory. Congratulations, you have beaten the adventures of Lolo. Thanks, Gary. Just wanted to get him involved in this one, as we got an appearance from all the TAs. And there you go, Lolo and Lala. My brain feels like I just took a, a standardized test. I am brain drained, but uh, that is our class. That is your adventures of Lolo Walkthrough here on Video Games 101. Please, again, consider subscribing if you haven't already done so to enroll in this class. Do one of these classes every single week. We'd love to have you aboard. Click that like button if you don't mind. It really does help us out to make future classes for you. And uh, leave a comment. Are you a fan of this series? Have you played the sequels, which we plan on getting to at some point? But uh, fun games, the Lolo series. Glad to tackle the first one here. And that's our time this week. We'll see you next week in the same spot for next week's class right here on Video Games 101. Hope to see you then. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like and comment on this video, and click subscribe if you haven't already, as this seriously helps me to keep making great content for you. And check the description of this video to see what song is playing right now.